What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Dynasty Queens. I'm your host, Pamela Nicole, and I've got the beautiful Nia J, baby. Mm. Oh, Nia, Nia. Before we get started with today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Social Media Blast Off. Whether you're an entrepreneur, artist, model, you name it, if you're needing to just up the ante with your socials and need a little extra oomph, you can go ahead and check out socialmediablastoff.net. What they do is just take all that information that you have, get you more followers, get you more out there into the world, so you can be the best version of yourself. So if you go ahead and scan the QR code right here, you can get 40% off. Go ahead and check out socialmediablastoff.net. Miss Mia, who do we have today? Tell me, who do we have here? You guys, we have someone who is deep into the music industry. Um, you know, in case you haven't heard of her, we have the lovely Miss Tamel in the building. Hey. 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 Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes. 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 Welcome yeah. to Dynasty Queens. Yes. So for those of you all who are not familiar, Tamel, go ahead and give us a little bit of background. Um, where did you come from? Um, what is it that you do? And just like a little, you know, little play by play on how you got into the industry. Okay. Um, well, for those who may not know, my name is Tamel. My tag is it's Tamel. <laughs> um, I'm originally from Philly, born and raised. Um, yeah, so I started off in Philly, um, doing local town shows. And then when I was like, Eight, nine years old, I joined a local uh, female group. And we, um, make a long story short, we grew the likes of the late Lisa Left Eye Lopez. And she took us under her wing. She just grabbed us and we started doing our thing. And, um, but that, I mean, you know, it was short lived because unfortunately she passed away. But that was like, I definitely work on everything I do. And in my mind, that she, you know, just took a little cup. Philly, which is all the all the girls, my uh, group, you know what I mean. She just believed in us, and we ain't had nothing. We really come from much, but um. So fast forward, I moved to Atlanta in my late teens, and that's when I um do the like some Usher, pops, um, just some legends along the way. I was able to go on tour with Usher. Um, I eventually dropped a mixtape. And that kind of like buzzed around with um, the coalition, the rich, uh, do the likes of future, did a um, remix with him. Um, and what else I did? I mean, I dropped a, um, a EP that went number one the first week, um, two years, no, three years ago. And I mean, you know, just my whole brand is just determination, empowerment, and survival. I, my whole life has been that. I come from that. Um, my music says that. And, you know, I'm just bringing the swag with it, but, you know, it's just yeah. nothing, nothing worth having comes easy. So I know that's great. Right. Nothing yeah. worth having comes easy. Want in life and keep going. So, I mean, that's just my little story in a, in a nutshell. But, you know, I'm still working. I'm still, I'm doing some TV and film things now. Um, okay, let's I'm, take it back a little bit. <laughs> let's <laughs> go back. So how did you meet uh, Lisa like that? How did you meet her? Um, through her uncle, rest in peace, Uncle Kyle. Um, he just passed recently, but um, I met her. We, the girls in the, my um former group, went to church with her uncle. Okay. And he was like, "You gotta meet these girls. You gotta meet these young girls." And she was like, "I ain't trying to meet nobody right now." <laughs> and the rest is history. We be sang for her, and she she loved us so. Um, but yeah, I met her through um her uncle Kyle, who was her stylist as well. Oh wow! Now you didn't mention a group. What was your group called? Oh man, we had a couple of names. We was Angel. We was uh Egypt. Lisa actually changed our name to Egypt. So ah. yeah, that's what's that's up. so dope. That's so cool. I love yes. that. Okay, so um, how was it? Like, how did it feel to be um in a girl group? Or like, I guess since you were really young, mm-hmm. did you ever see yourself, you know, performing with other women, or did you think you were going to be a solo act? And how is it to, you know, to work as a as a team with other people in a music group at that? <laughs> well, my thing is, it was just more so about singing. For me. I was singing. I know this sounds cliche, but 
I was singing before I could talk. So my, that's what my parents always told me. So I was humming doing little rhymes and all this stuff before I could even say a sentence. So it never mattered to me exactly how I was going to sing because my voice was heard. And um, my parents had separated when I was a kid. And I had went into this apartment complex, and that's when I met the girls. And they were already doing their thing, so I just kind of came towards the end, and that's when we met Left Eye. Um, but my, to answer your question, my biggest thing was just more so just the same, just to get my voice heard. And by any means necessary at the time. Gotcha. Dance out from the crowd. She said, look, y'all gonna see me. <laughs> Love that. Love that. So as far as like um, just growing up and everything, um, did you do church choirs and stuff? Were you big in like um, the church and singing as well? Of course, um, that's where you get that that feeling from that that mm-hmm. that, that Holy Spirit, you know. Um, but yeah, I definitely grew up going to church. I was I'm a, I'm a church kid, you know. My mom's an evangelist, my father's a minister, so I was going to church four or five times a week. Uh-huh. You know, the fight about me singing secular music but my parents just knew it was just always something I wanted to do so they just had to she was like you know what she don't want to do she don't want to do nothing crazy she ain't trying to be nobody big mama right now she just wanted to do music so they let me follow my dream yes. and they had to be able to respect that I mean you were just yeah. trying to follow through with your passion like you exactly. said you weren't you weren't trying to just like be an industry hoe you weren't trying to be a baby mama uh, you wanted to yeah. actually showcase your vocal abilities or whatever else you, you know you bring. So I think that's really cool and unique. So as a young girl transitioning from the music world, um, how was it like touring with Usher and working with him? Like how did that whole thing come to be? Man, it was crazy. I, I always loved it. Still do. Um, so it was definitely surreal. Um, but it it felt like it was just supposed to happen too at the same time like I can't even front like it was more so like I'm supposed to be here and as the real as it was and unreal it, as it was it felt like I was supposed to be here so um it was a moment you know what I mean and every time I'm with him or he's giving me some um uh you know just giving me some uh, advice or we just did a record together earlier this year so it's like, I'm just sponge. I'm like, okay, okay. All right, that's what I need to do. All right, cool. So right. it's, it's definitely a uh, um, learning experience every time I'm around him. Or every time we in the same room, I'm just like, fun eating it up. For exactly. sure. And I like how you also said, you know, you had a moment where you were like, wow. But then you were like, you know, what? I'm supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's supposed to. This is for the elite. This is for the people that put in that hard work. This is for the talented, the upper echelon. And that's nothing to be, that's nothing to say you're being arrogant. No, that's you knowing who you are. So, okay. it's supposed to be special. Especially, especially when things don't come easy for you and you don't expect things to come easy mm-hmm. and you worked for everything you have and everything you're doing and everything you're doing. I feel like, you know, even my post today with Instagram, I'm like, benefits come with work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like, you got to accept that. Know you put in the work and know you're ready for when the opportunities present itself. And she carries her thought with a pride. I love that. Because you know what you know you did that and you know what your worth is, you know exactly who you are. And I I'm just, I respect it so much. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now on top of you know, you have Usher as, you know, someone big that you look to. I always think of Usher, I think of Justin Bieber too, because you know, he took him under his wing and looking for his girl. You know, he just, he has stars and you're, you're up there with that. So I, I got nothing but good stuff to say. Like that's just awesome. So, um, who would you say that you've had, um, so many people that you look up to, um, currently, I would say name two people. So someone when you were growing up that you looked up to and then present day, who is someone that you look up to? Man, um, somebody that I used to look up to as a child and look up to to this day, I know this sounds weird. They're like, oh, you're from Philly, you from Uptown, you so whatever. 
But I love Barbara Streisand. And if you don't know her, you need to look her up. <laughs> She's a producer, a writer, a, a artist, a composer. Like, it's nothing that this lady can't do. And that's where I see myself as. Um, so, and that was as a childhood because I grew up in a Christian household where we wasn't allowed to listen to the radio and watch TV. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's, I was, my dad let me listen to Barbara Streisand and musicals. And that's what I was allowed to watch. So that was my Whitney. That was my, you know, I love Beyonce. Of course, I grew up watching Beyonce, but that was that for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like I want to, I want to do that. I want to do it all. I want to master that. So, um, it's still it was her then, it's still her now. Um, I love a lot of art. I'm inspired by a lot of people. Like, you know, you gotta be a in this game, and you gotta really study your craft. So I learned a lot. I learned because. I love. I learned a lot from that stage. That Renaissance tour, that just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I didn't go on the tour, but you know, just right. witnessing it. Right. You know, on the um, just being a stand. You know what I mean? It was it was amazing. I love Doja Cat. It's, it's a lot of people that I'm inspired by. I can't lie, that Barbara Streisand one that that threw me off, but I respect her as well. It does. It throws a lot of people off. But no, I, but listen, I I like her too. Like I yeah. like her movie. Um, she had a classic movie with Robert Redford. I think like what's it called As They Were or so As They Are, something like that. Yeah, she mm-hmm. did legend. I think she did Broadway and stuff too. But I don't quote me on that. You would know. And, you know, I love that she mentioned Barbara Streisand. One of my favorite, all time favorite songs is the song she did with Celine Dion called "Tell Him." Just like the okay. melodies, you know, the, just the harmonies, like with both of those strong vocals, man. Uh, so. Okay, I have a see. You taught me something because I haven't heard that. Oh, it's, on it's, on Celine, it's on Celine's album. I think it's on her number one album. It is fantastic. Okay. I'm feeling this cultured black girl energy. I'm feeling it. You know, like we gotta open our minds. You know, yes. there's more sure. beyond. You know, of course we love hip hop, but there is more. There's an diaspora of music. Absolutely. I love crack music, but you know, it's you gotta be your horizons. You gotta, you know, it's a world out here you gotta experience. You know what I'm saying? Indeed, indeed. For sure. <laughs> so okay, so Usher tour, I mean, at this point, you're still a young woman. Mm-hmm. You are already touring with Usher and doing all this other cool stuff, working with Left Eye. So transitioning, I guess, um, after the Usher tour. What was like your first solo project that you're like really proud and can speak on? And how did that project come to be? Well, the thing or not, I only came out was one project. And that's the one who it, that's the one who that's the one I dropped maybe um two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right like well, it was after COVID, but um so that was my first project and before that I did a mixtape. And that went crazy like in um Atlanta, the streets the you know. So that went, you know, that's when I did the song with uh, Future. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm still, I still got a lot more to do. Like, you know what I mean? So you still got to just stay tuned with me because, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm the more feet, TV and film and syncing um, songs as well. So, yeah. I love that. So, Mel, is there a song that you've um, done that just really speaks to you and it kind of speaks to your fans as well as like your life and what you've gone through that just really emulates who you are? Yeah, dedicated. It's a song called, that I, it actually, my, my, um, he was called Dedicated and the self-titled song is, is what speaks to me. Like, you want to know who Tamel is, you just, like, it's, it's, it's me. Like I start off the first line. Why is life so complicated? Why it gotta be so hard to make it? Like if you ask anybody, I'm dedicated because it's like people talk about the glitz, people talk about the glamour, people talk about the great things that happen when they get there, but they're not talking about the in between stuff, mm-hmm. the stops, the the survival mode you have to be in, the focus mode you have to be. In. So like that song, check it out. It's called. That. <laughs> okay, I'm here for the little plug-in, of course. We I'm love sure. the plug-in here at Dynasty Queens. Yes. <laughs> what would it be without that? Um, that is really awesome. So, first project came out not that long ago. 
you had your uh, mixtape before that. So give us, you know, I have to ask. You gotta break us off with a little sample of something, either an oh. original piece or perhaps one of your favorites from one of the greatest. I don't know. The floor is yours, Tamil. Go ahead. What you got? <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me see something new. No, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something that a lot of people know me for. I redid the um, Mini Ripperson classic song "Loving You." Oh, I love so, that song. Love Mini Ripperson as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll do a little 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 snippet of that. Loving you is easy because you're beautiful. Making love with you, baby, is all I wanna do. You don't need to warm up. What? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need no warm up on spot on cue like a okay. true professional. I'm here for it. Yeah. So, so let's say you're traveling. What are like some places, some cool spots that you've been to in your day? What are some? What's like your favorite vacation spot? Um, I love London, Amsterdam, but I didn't like the food. No disrespect. I love y'all over there because y'all show me support. Um, but let me see. <sighs> I've been so many places. I love New Orleans. Mm. I, I did a show with Kiki Cole out there. That was super fun. I, well, I opened up for her. That was super fun. Um, I don't know. I've been to some cool, pretty. But my, you know what? Actually, San Francisco is like I love because it gives me New York and LA at the same mm-hmm. time. I think about San Fran, and then all the a lot of the public like Spotify is there. Pandora, so I had, I you know met with that out there. So yeah, I, I like San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco. I love it. And they have perfect weather year round. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that California weather. But I like how she still made it local. At first, she mentioned Amsterdam and stuff. I, I matter of fact, that's a place I never yeah. visited. I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple girl, you know, I'm a simple girl, but I, I love, I do love to travel, but I don't get a chance to really, you know, because I'm working. Yeah. So I don't get, like when you're working and you're traveling, court, you're at town check, you're on stage, you don't really get to, a chance to really experience a city like most people can, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I have a chance to experience San Fran and, you know. So yeah. Sure. Now, look. She mentioned the food was not that great, so we're gonna go ahead. And, we're all foodies here. You know what? I need to edit that part because oh, they might be <laughs> <laughs> But no. no I I where, what is where is so, the best place you've had food on your travels? Oh, New Orleans for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. New Orleans, like hey, oh, and I, you know what? I, you know I'm a Philly girl, so I love my city's food, but. I do enjoy Texas. Oh, yes, I love Miss Pam, yeah. we are, me and Pamela are both from Houston, Texas. Oh, Houston. I'm out here in Atlanta with you. So I'm out here. I've been here for a couple years, but we're originally from Houston. And I yeah. must say, I love our cuisine too. I'm going to have to get New Orleans number one in my hometown. Number two. But yeah. yeah. It's, it is what it is. So yeah. <laughs> we got that food out there in Houston, don't we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all, y'all is, I was like, okay, y'all give it Philly a run for y'all. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's, it's smacking, for real. For so, sure. Yeah. For sure. That's so funny. Oh, man. It's like, when you have, plans, like, you have uh, plans um, for the rest of the year, I know the year's closing, but do you have any um, little projects you like to share with us that you have going on right now? Well, well I'm actually, little projects, I'm actually, dropping a project um before the end of this year 
Um, so everybody's been getting on me about when you're going to drop it, when you're going to drop it. So I'm dropping it before the end of this year. And then, like I said, stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram. I got some movies. I did, um, I did the theme song for the new Powerpuff, uh, girl. So like, I got some stuff going, like you some stuff. So I did the theme song for, um, the pop, it's, it's like a series, the new Powerpuff, uh, series that's in the works. Um, so I did the theme song for that. That is um, really, so I like that. Because, you know, so I, I was a kid of the 90s, so I remember that Powerpuff Girls. I don't know what this generation's Powerpuff Girls is. Cam, you may know because you have two girls. Mm-hmm. But that is, that's really dope. I like yes. that. It's fun. I'm, I'm really, I used to just be one-sided with, I'm just an artist. I'm just an artist. But now it's like art, it's expressive. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can it in different ways. I definitely took some acting classes. Been getting some calls about that. Like, okay. Yeah. Stay tuned. Absolutely. <laughs> She's out here. <laughs> She's out here. Yes. Like I said, I'm in Atlanta too. So, you know, we're going to have to do like, we love, we're thinking about doing like follow ups with all of our guests just to be like, let's catch up. Like, let's follow her on, you know, set or something and see what she's, what she's doing. Um, so new music, besides like the powerful girls and stuff, what else are you working on? Are like, where, where is your mind at right now? As far as like style wise, have you thought about playing with like different, you know, something different? For sure. Um, so that's why I said, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping some new music, um, before the end of this year is out and it's definitely, um, Philly, but it's definitely not the traditional R and B that you might be expecting me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely gonna get to mellow all over it. Like not I sound completely all like, but it's just I'm playing with the lower register, you know, it's 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 definitely um you know, I'm, I'm can I per- can I curse? Yeah, yeah. This your show. I'm, I'm, I'm popping my shit. I'm popping hey. my shit. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> One thing about me, the narrative is not going to change. It's still about determination, empowerment, survival, and fashion, and just being fucking fly. And work, while you're working for it, you looking good while you're doing it. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. You so speaking, of fashion, fashion. speaking of fashion, Tamel. Top three favorite designers and go. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, Valenciaga does not, they they don't, to me, they don't, mm, um, who else? Okay. I, I'm, I'm a Versace girl. I like oh. Versace glasses on. I'm, I'm, I'm real traditional when it comes to that. And then I also like, um, Vitego. I, I like Vitego. I like their boots. I like their little flavor. I like the little bubble. Thing they got going on, so yeah, I'm simple. I, I like, but I'm a girl who likes to mix mm-hmm. high end with like I'm not. I, I, I love high high end fashion. I'll I'll go school Adidas sweats, sweat right? Right. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> with a Valentino shirt. Look, okay. Have have a little, have a little like high end. Right. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Exactly. It's all about mixed and variation. So oh, yeah. yeah. Well, how would you define your style like in two words? Huh? How would you define your style in two words? Um, street hot fashion. And it's three words, but <laughs> street hot street hot fashion. You said. Mm-hmm. Street hot fashion. Street hot fashion. Okay. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. You can't take the Philly out of me. You can't. <laughs> like, she got to have a little piece of home, you know? I, I love yeah. it. I love Listen, it. You know, the, street, the streets is where the high des- the high end designers go to get inspiration from. So, yeah. This is true. This is so true. The street core, the, like, that whole vibe is like, and that's what keeps it edgy to me. You know what I mean? Yes. Cause you can yeah. just see that, like you can just tell by your sense of style, like you know, you like you're comfy, but you got the swag, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's not like cause some people can do it's, it can be overdone, but you do. You just have like 
it's just like chef kiss, like you know. Yeah, it's just enough. It's like it's giving. Exactly. It's giving what it's supposed to give. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I put thought into everything I do. I love that. Yeah, absolutely, got to. So okay, I'm gonna throw. We're gonna throw the topic off. So when it comes to like, because it is Halloween season or whatever. So when it comes to like movies or whatever, are you like a comedy girl? Are you a horror? Are you like a romantic? Like love story fanatic, or what is your whenever you have a little inkling of time to just have to yourself for like a day? Because you know how it is, like when you're in the hustle and bustle. What's your go to type of flick? Well, it depends on the vibe. Okay. But my first, and I tell like, I do question and answers on my Instagram, my thing, I call it for design, but it's horror, then comedy. <laughs> Then suspense. Ooh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gangster. I like, I like to, <laughs> it's not too much that scares me, but I, I read a horror flick, put sleep on some scary shit. Right. Like more than the, like a, a love. And I like, I like love stories. Actually, I always fall asleep on love stories. So I gotta be like in that vibe. But I mean, even for me, if I'm chilling with a dude, like, I'm not going to watch a scary movie because that'll be something like, oh, right. you get a little closer on a scary movie than imagine the love scene. Oh, look how they kiss and boo. Oh, you want to be more like, oh, or act like you're scared. Right. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just giving y'all a little game, you know, but I like the good scary movie. Same, yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah. yeah, it's like the it's giving a damsel in a stress. But honestly, if it's a Netflix and chill situation, I mean, how far are we getting into <laughs> the hard <laughs> field <more? laughs> I mean, once you get a little closer, I mean, you might be like muted a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let it like start going to the. No, I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> poor, yeah, I feel like you're close to the dark. You feel like you need to scream and you're like, oh, oh yeah. The movie. You- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yes. So what are your other hobbies? We we know what you do, but like do you like to cook? Like, what what do you what does Tamel like to do for hobbies? I love to cook. I love to actually fix stuff. Ooh. I like so like if anything is broken in my crib, like I love to like I was one of those kids that I would if a remote I would take the whole remote apart and put it back together. Um I but it's crazy, I never was good at science. Never was good at that stuff, but I always was good at fixing things. So, like, everybody know, oh, Tamel can fix it. If there's anything broke, Tamel can fix it. So, I love to fix things. And I love to cook because I just love the reaction of how people be like, yo, you can really cook. And I want people to learn how to really go down the quarantine. Because I had, you know, yeah. outside closed. We just, we were shut down. So, <laughs> I had no choice. I was doing TikToks. Singing and cooking. Yeah. yeah, I can say the same. We didn't have a choice, like you said. It took a while for the restaurants to open back up. What's your favorite dish to make? It Before the quarantine, it was my spaghetti. I know that sounds real corny, but it was my spaghetti and my taco. But eh, it's nothing I can do. Collard greens is fine in my... Um, my uh oh my gosh, my turkey smoked turkey legs is smacking. I'm yo, I make the best party wings like braised with like oh, it's just it's just like it's 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 a big deal. Like I really I really do what I do. Like yes. and even my tacos are more like I do fresh cilantro. I do like a whole shebang. I make the tortillas like with a crisp but still soft inside. Like I I do a whole other level. Man. So. Yeah, but I mean, I have, a lot of, I have a lot of dishes. Before it was just like two or three, and I mastered them. But now it's like I'm unfuckwittable. Oh, do you know somebody can cook real good? She said braids, y'all. So you know she using them cooking terms. <laughs> Baby girl, know how to cook. Okay. <laughs> this is my mom. My mom. She's like, okay, okay. You you can grill. I'm like, yeah, thanks, mom. <laughs> you know when mom gives you praise, that's when you know you're like, okay, right. You made it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the shit because mama is giving me, you know, her stamp of approval. 
that I part. was envisioning when you said the greens and you said the turkey neck. And I, you know, once again, I'm from Houston, so we love soul food. I'm just, my mouth Ooh. started watering. I was just like, what? Yeah. We got to try some of Timo's cooking. Right. Okay. We got to get her in the studio. And she has to, we have to do like a cooking segment with Timo. Okay. Let's see what they think about that. Yeah. Or Timo cookbook. I mean, I'm just saying. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Put it out there. You know, I'm she sure. is a woman who ever invents herself and does, it takes on more challenges. So I can see, I can see a cookbook. What you think, Timo? You see a cookbook in the future? <laughs> It's nothing I can't do. There you go, girl. Yes. However, it's nothing you can't do. So, yeah, man. <laughs> I don't see how to do it. <laughs> yes. So, I'm going to go ahead and change the subject uh, again. We were talking about food. What is your all-time favorite song by anybody? Ooh. I was going to ask her that, too. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably in my it, it's probably oh my gosh now oh because like Mary J. Oh, it's still Beyonce. Interesting like, love. Uh, that's one of my favorite songs. Uh-huh. And soon as by um soon as I get home by uh, Faith. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good one. Yeah, I love Faith. That's one of my favorite songs as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have a few. I just, I mean, because I'm my heart. Live about my shit. So today, that's the. If you ask me tomorrow, it might be two different songs. Right. right. Today, that's the. Hey, I'm here from that era. Yeah, Faith Evans. She was tough. Yeah. I know yeah. you always mention Mary J. Blige, but I, I think I'm more so with Faith Evans fan. I don't know why. Maybe it's because like the rasp in her voice. So that girl mm-hmm. could sing, can still sing. Yeah. You know, I just I'm feeling it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just great vibes and everything. So we're in 2023. Mm-hmm. We only have a couple months left in this year. What is something that Tamil has on her list that you're willing to share of things to check off before we close 2023? Um, I mean, with me, I'm like I said, I, I kind of just stated everything that I've been doing and what I've been up to. So, I mean, just stay tuned. Um, just don't be surprised if you hear my voice. Just see more and more. Um, yeah, man. Just stay tuned to the, the new project I'm dropping. I haven't um, came up with a name, but I have all the, the, the project is complete. Um, um, yeah. So, the sky's the limit. I also have a, a, a workout line, fitness line. Oh, I was going to ask about that next. I was going to ask about your, your fitness line. So, how did you, how did that get started? And then tell us about some of the pieces that you have and where they can find everything. Well, I'm a Leo. Leo game. So, it's inspired by me being a lion. So, um, it's cheetah print. Oh, um, so it's definitely a lifestyle. Everything I do is about a lifestyle mm-hmm. and about um, just being authentic to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's fit with horse fries, it's a twist, but it's also something that you would be like, I'm kind of cute. I'm about to go to the coffee shop too. Mm-hmm. And I might go to the mall with this. I might throw this tea panther on. So it's definitely a lifestyle. Um, good. It compresses everything. It's it's tucked in everything. It's tucked in. If you just want to feel, just want to feel a little secure. But um, yeah, man, and um, I'm doing some things with the um athletics. Yeah, man, I just you know, I, like I said, I want to get into the fashion world because fashion is such a big part of my lifestyle, my uh-huh. everyday. Life. And um, yeah, so check that out. Two pink athletic. Okay. I love those pieces, pieces that can serve as well, like just you know going out, doing whatever, mm-hmm. running errands, working out, going out, and you can carry with maybe some cute shoes or whatever in a bag and exactly dress it exactly. up. Those are the best pieces. I love it. I love when you can take something like an athletic type lounge, you know, slash lounge, and you can like pair it with a you know some heels or some like combat boots. You know, it's so versatile. You know. 
And that's what I thought about with my line. I said, I want it to be something that you can make match. You can put the bra on with some leggings, some mm-hmm. you can do the all cheaper. You can put the top on with a cute, the bottom on with a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, or sometimes, like, I can do an outfit and then I like a jean jacket, like an oversized jacket, and put some glasses on, put a little necklace on, and I'm outside. <laughs> exactly. And that's a whole other fit. It, like, so many ways you can, you know, put it together and piece it. I like that. Is that niche is going to sell and be like, okay, everybody like, needs it for a different reason. So, mm-hmm, I right. love that. I like my line, but every time I step out with my feet pants that fit on, people stop me. And men a lot, but women just as much as men. Like, it's men and women. They be like, yo, what you got on? I liked it. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, this is, this is my line. Mm-hmm. Literally. So, it's definitely staying out the crowd. And it's but well, that's the best way to market your product. Market it yourself, girl. <laughs> exactly. Period. You have to. Because if you're not confident enough to wear your pieces, then who else is? Mm-hmm. And for you to be like, oh, yeah, this is my line. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I need that. <laughs> and that's how you know you're on to something. I love that. Man, there's like, you've gone through so much in you know, the young life that you've lived so far. Um, what is something like a word of advice that you would give to your younger self? Mm. Let's say when you were like a child before you got into the music industry and everything. You know what? I think for a while it did because I fought so hard to be a singer because my parents were like, oh, you're not singing. And it's not that they didn't um, support me. It was more so they didn't approve of it because that's the world that we came from. But my thing, I would tell my young people, F with anybody. If you believe it, you can do it. And if it's not hurting anybody, do it to the best of your ability, no excuse. So that's my biggest. I that's that. my biggest. Yeah. And you know, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell I, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice, but I had a big fear after the accident. I had a big fear of driving. I never wanted to drive mm-hmm. because I was I was it was a fear of mine. And I overcame that fear. I said, you know what? I can't tell my I can't tell my supporters. So don't be afraid of anything. Fear in the face. Um, keep on going. Keep on persevering. And then I'm like, I'm not living that. And I'm holding this like weight on my back. Like, I'm scared to do it. I don't want their property. I saw it happen. I don't want that mm-hmm. thing to keep on playing in the back of my head. And once I was able to do it, I was just telling my friend today, like, I feel so free. Like, I feel like it's really nothing I can't do now that I'm driving and I'm comfortably driving. Yeah, it's possible while driving, but it's like I'm proud of myself. Like I'm really proud. Of so face your fears, y'all. You can do whatever you want in life. I promise. Yeah. promise. Really. I can't say it better myself. Like, and it can be so. Whatever it is, whatever challenge anybody is facing, you really just have to take that first step forward and just like go for it. take a deep breath and just and just, just take a breath. As corny as it sounds, but it's really true. It's so true. You can go to yourself back from so much mm-hmm. just from one little twist you got to do or one little turn you got to do of that fear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Face them, man. Because that, 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 that should have just overpowered your life. Mm-hmm. It's debilitating yeah. like, in some instances, too, you know? It's just like, man, like, how do you overcome, you know, and you're living proof, like, you know, and that's such a good message to give people just to kind of get out of, outside of yourself mm-hmm. and just know, you know, and you're, like I said, you're living proof, girl, you're doing it. Thank you. Yeah. And you also just never know what people are going through um, as well, like mentally the struggle. So mm-hmm. just for people to hear some words of encouragement and just being raw and authentic about, you know, the journey and what it can take. 
um, and being able to just go go for it. I think that's a beautiful message, beautiful message to spread um, to any young woman or young man, for that matter. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. tell us something that people may not know about you, Tamel. Do you have like any secret talents that people don't know about or a no. quirk about you? Well, I'm quirky. Other than, a lot of people don't know, unless you're close to me, you don't know that I know how to fix it. I really know how to fix it. Um, but I don't know. I, 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 hard. That's something that I have a hard exterior, but like, I'm right about Like, it's going to be like, don't talk about like, I'm very, very intentional about those. And if, I don't, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, if you come to me and you tell me, and it might not be quirky, but I'm just saying, if you come to me and say, oh, this person was talking shit about you, blah, 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 I'm like, okay, cool, but what you say? Like, that's my thing. Ooh, like, yes. them Because I don't care what they say, because they don't care too, they don't care about me, but what do you say? Because I'm that person, like, wait, 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 now what we not going to do, we not going to talk about my people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm that girl, so, I mean, and I feel like that is something special about me because a lot of people don't stand for their people. You know exactly. I mean? Or it's whoever it's convenient to be cool with at that moment. You're saying it's this friend right. talking all type of trash about whoever and then, you know, playing the double playing the two faced friend. Yeah. And you're like, nah, what, what did you say? <laughs> what was your response? Even if, if even if it's two friends that's been to me, I'ma listen to you, mm-hmm. but I'm a pro- if you're wrong and I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like, yeah, girl, because she be doing that too. No, that's not me. Mm-mm. I'm going to be like, no, you need to talk to, you know what? You need to call. Do y'all need to come to the spot? Y'all need to come to my house? We, we drink it up, smoke it up on the hood. Let's talk about it, but we're not going to go back and forth. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like that's special. I feel, I feel like a lot of people don't, and I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people don't take friendship and take, you know what I mean? love and take people in their lives that serious and I treasure that you know what I mean so yeah for sure and you know because you're out here in Atlanta as well like there could be a lot of drama and in the entertainment industry it's not that big of a circle so it's just like it's just really (laughs) it's a lot but you just have to learn how to maneuver through you know those Mm -hmm. situations but I like I like your perspective that's a really mature way to look at it. So, you know, a lot of a lot of them would be like, oh, what? It's on site without even knowing, like, knowing the whole story before it's on site. Like, what's really going on? Yeah. <laughs> and so my that is bullshit. Like, things are so really different out there in Atlanta. Like, I'm listening to both. I'm just like, people in Vegas don't do that at all. It's just kind of like people just go their separate ways out here. They don't. There's no talk. There's no nothing. It's like people just separate and they don't talk to each other ever again. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wild. mean, I can cut you off and act like I just never existed. But, um, and then also, what people don't know, I can do the shit out of some hair. Oh. I do sewings, everything. Lashes. I, I just always was just good at, shout out to my old group members because they were like my big sisters and they taught me how to do all that. And I'm just, I'm just great hair, um, makeup, lashes, and all that like beauty stuff. I'm really good. That's a good skill set to have, though, you know, especially yeah. in that day. Yeah. yeah, especially if you let's say you have a performance and something happens with a makeup artist, you already know what to do. So right, you'll be straight. But I see, like my actually my gift, my second gift outside of singing is hair. Like I'm really really. Ooh. It's a gift, like it really is. I've been doing hair since I was like eight, nine, doing everybody at church. They used to do their braids and their micros. How much yeah. for those knotless that you got right now? Uh, no, I'm just I'm teasing. I'm saying uh, we're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so we're gonna talk because they're clean and crisp. I'm like, they are. Oh, they're good. Good. A, a client, possibly. 
<laughs> no, I love it. Just a jack of all trades. Talented, yeah. you know, artistic, creative, free spirit. I love it. Yeah. Just really honed in. It seems like you're very like I sense the hunger, like you're very like, what's next? So yeah, I, you know, I feel I feel that you're, you know, on top of everything you're doing. So I respect it. I love it. Right? Yeah, yeah. We gotta embrace the female empowerment. We have to embrace this, you know, this new movement of let's support one another. Let's not tear each other down like some of the reality shows are trying to do. Let's try to uplift one another and congratulate all these beautiful women out here getting to the back. You know, mm-hmm. period. So mm-hmm. for that to me, I have nothing but you know positive things. You know, so. yeah. Yes. For sure. Then you know what? When she was singing me, there were two artists that popped into my head that I could see you, Tamel, working with. And who is that? I would say one would be Yeba. Because mm. you almost got that soul to, you know, the runs. I'm just like, when you started doing the runs, I'm like, ooh, ooh, yes. I could see a collab with Yeba. And then I could see you do a collab with Sabrina Claudia as well. Sabrina Claudia. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just saw it. Like when she was singing, I'm like, oh, ooh, yeah. So I just love about it. Pam, she's going to pull those artists out the back, like the people you don't expect. Because she's like, <laughs> you, you know. No, she's going to check out that Celine Dion and Mark Strong song when we get off your watch. <laughs> Because I'm like, wait, I'm late for the party. It's gonna blow you away, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> the link and Barbara? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's it's a legend. Legend. Yes. I'm so here for it. Well, Samel, it has really been an honor to speak with you, um, catch up with everything that you have going on. Um, go ahead and share for the viewers where they can follow you, um, where they can check out any of the projects you have coming up. And also the clothing line. Go ahead and plug your stuff uh, one more time for the viewers. All right, y'all. Once again, it's your girl. It's my Instagram, ITS at ITSTMELLE. My, that's my YouTube, my Twitter, my um, TikTok, my Snapchat. Oh, um, man, I got some music dropping in the end here. Um, I got some movie stuff coming out. I got some syncing stuff. You'll be hearing this voice everywhere soon, hopefully. <laughs> and um, yeah, just stay tuned and follow my clothing line at T Panther Athletic. It's my uh, the Instagram and also the website. So females and men, whatever, whoever, it's inclusive for everybody. So I wanna. About if you're about athletics and um, lifestyle and vibe, fuck the T pen. I love it. Uh, oh, commercial is everything, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we appreciate Tanel so much for coming out and kicking it with us here, Dynasty Queens. So, yeah. in closing, I am your girl, Mia J. Once again, with the beautiful Pamela Nicole. And yeah. until next time, Dynasty Queens, baby. See ya. <laughs>